Well, Jack, it's really been great to be out here at Manta LaSalle with you this week. And I, I remember when we got started working on the planning and couldn't imagine what was going to happen. Well, that, that's for sure. And I uh, sure appreciate uh, that you uh, asked me to do this and particularly for this particular site. You know, as you know, I've gr spent a good bit of my career in Las Vegas in the desert environment and really have come to really love this kind of an environment and the project where we can actually uh, do something that impacts not only the water resources but the habitat for the, the, the vegetation and, and the critters. Absolutely. You know, one of the unique things about this site that I thought was really interesting, especially yesterday when we toured, was all the different agencies involved in the different properties we're working on. Yeah, this was a unique opportunity, even though the major emphasis came from the U.S. Forest Service. We ended up doing actually a majority of our work on uh, land by the, with, managed by the Bureau of Land Management. And a lot of times these federal agencies don't really get along, and among other things, the uh, Forest Service is in the Department of Agriculture and the Bureau of Land Management is in the Department of Interior. Exactly. But on top of that, we've had great cooperation from both uh, Emory and Carbon County people and something like 19 other organizations and agencies have contributed to the success of this project and we couldn't have done it without them. What I've been amazed about too is just like last week at Mark Twain, everybody that's here, the youth and adult, the staff, everybody's very excited about what they're doing and I I've just been real impressed with their willingness to get out and serve. Yes, that's, as I wandered around and I was out in the field I guess every day and even through the week and yesterday as we were down there touring everybody was still very excited and eager and let's go kill more tamarisk exactly. it, uh, you'd think at the end of four hard days that uh, people would be sort of wearing out and in fact there was a, one of the participants who trained as a sawyer from my own lodge i saw him wednesday evening and been saw sawing for three days and he was said i don't want to go on wreck i want to go out there on my fourth day I saw him, of course, the next morning. He says, you know, I thought about that overnight. I think I'm going to take a day off. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's the amazing thing, too, is uh, the, ins the instructor corps and how hard they're working and back-to-back -back these three weeks. And they've really been invaluable. As, as Everything I've seen, they've just been great. I don't think we could have pulled this project off, let alone the other four sites, without them. They provide that critical mini middle management layer. I mean, we've we've done all the, the planning and the... Uh, Tracy Schultz, the uh, operations section chief, put all that together, but in order for that to really be carried out in a safe way right. and provide additional resources of the IC people being trained as sawyers and medical people and, and even uh, the, those who are trained to handle the media. Again, we couldn't have done it without them. You know, the other thing that was really gratifying was seeing the lieutenant governor here the other night and the visits with the city council and everyone else. That's been very nice. We work very hard at that, and I got to give a lot of uh, credit to J.J. Arnold and, and the youth that worked with him, uh, I call him John Kay, uh, who really spent a lot of time writing letters and uh, communicating with all the local people. And, and the uh, local governments have been extremely supportive. Uh, the uh, representative from the county commissioners and the mayor of, of Huntington have been out several times to visit us and as you say we visited their their meetings and one of the things that the mayor said to me that I think is very neat is this school was the headquarters mm -hmm. for the mine disaster that occurred within the last year and and she said we're really glad to have a positive project here and the positive use of the school it's going to help the healing of the community They've all, everyone I've talked to, people in the town and, and all the local area people have been very supportive, very excited that we've been here. So it's been really a positive thing that way too. Yes, and the, the, the businesses in town have been very supportive. We you know, set up our account with uh, Zion Bank, and of course one of the things we ask them, which businesses in town really supported the Scouts? And that's where we went to set up our accounts. That's good. What do you think uh, was the greatest obstacle to be here this week? You know, that's a, that's a good question, and when you consider, I remember many what, years ago, it was three or four years ago, we were talking about having a thousand people at each of, each of these sites, and of, one of the obstacles really was, this was in many respects a hard sell. You know, you saw pictures of the other sites of mountains and right. green, and here was this picture of a, an arch uh, in the desert, and I think that made it a little bit more difficult from a, a marketing perspective. Uh, other than that, in, in reality, the number of participants and staff that showed up here was really about right. 
not only did we meet the original goal, but we added additional acreage to be cleared within the last month. And uh, we met that original goal, which was set when we thought we'd have a thousand people. So what were the barriers? Mm, I'm not sure there were anything that really was major out there. Uh, we had some difficulty in a few key staff areas, but again, we pulled that off. That's good. What do you, what do you hope uh, participants and staff will take home from this event? Probably the key thing is really to have an appreciation for the out of doors, understand the ecosystems, the impacts of bringing an invasive species into an environment and what that species does to change what was what is here naturally. And so the, I think really the take home message is that we doing these kinds of projects on our public lands, whether it be Forest Service, BLM, Park Service, city, county lands or whatever, can really make a difference for the future of our environment. You know, one of the things that we really focused on, we were really concerned about as we developed AeroCorps 5, was the ability for every participant to be, be able to go back to their lodge, back to their council, and work with the council to develop some kind of service project and do these kind of things on a more routine basis. And I'm really excited about that. The attitude really has demonstrated to me we need to do more of these and emphasize to people how important it is to really get outdoors and, and maintain these resources. Oh, absolutely right. And I've heard a discussion among a number of the participants, not both youth and adults, about wanting to take this idea back to their home lodges and, and do it right. back at home. And I think that's uh, really what going to be one of the legacies of this whole thing. And another thing for me is, who's basically spent my entire life enjoying the out of doors and what drove me to become a geologist and I look at what's happening at today's youth always plugged into technology and we right. can't get them outside and things the author of the book uh, no child left in the woods or whatever that was yeah and talked about what he called nature deficit disorder exactly. and I think projects like this and actually the whole scouting movement can make an impact on out and get our youth outdoors you know, the other thing that I, I, I struggle last with... Last child in the woods. Yeah, last child in the woods, <laughs> that's right. The thing I really struggle with, too, is as you look at this, and I've visited now two sites and seen all of the work that's gone on and all the planning and everything else, the di most difficult thing for me as chairman of the committee is to be able to really express to people how much I appreciate, you know, what they've done and the involvement. And, and what you see is they're passionate about it, and all they really want to hear is thank you. But it's still difficult to really convey to them how much it means to me personally and to you to see them work so hard. Oh, absolutely right. I don't think there's any way we can really thank all the participants and staff here enough. I mean, everybody has put in countless hours here, obviously, and do account carrying out the project, but the pulling the staff together and the key incident command staff and in the IC uh, lingo, the, the section chiefs, uh, right. all those individuals have just put in countless hours over the last few years preparing for this. And, and how do you thank them? You really can't. You really can. And, and people do it because they love it. They see the, the benefit. But you still really struggle to make sure they know how much you do appreciate it. And that's, that's tough. And I really appreciate what you've done. Uh, well, thank you. And I know I struggle to figure out what was I going to give in addition to, you know, what had been arranged for everybody. What, what, what was I going to give my key staff that would uh, have thank them and have them really remember what we did here? Yeah, that's and good. You'll find out tonight. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Well, I really do appreciate it. It's been a great week. And uh, Mark Ray will be here tonight from the Ag Department, and I'm looking forward to Mark being here. He's really been a strong supporter on the project, and I really did appreciate what the Lieutenant Governor had to say the other night about how important it is to make a difference. Yeah, no, he, uh, that, was a, that was a key discussion, and, and his ability to relate to his cow scouting experience and the other stories that he told, uh, I think, helped bring our message home. I think so, too. And the other, the other thing that's neat about this project, and a number of individuals have sort of researched the past history of the Boy Scouts, and uh, it's been a long time since we've done the scouting movement as this scale of a project to, to help protect our public lands. It really has, and I think because of this, because of the reaction we're getting, we're going to see a lot more opportunities for those things to happen. Yeah, that'd be great.